Hey, this is Kotlin Conversations, where we're having conversations with just a few of the many great speakers and guests here at Kotlin Conf 2024. I'm Huyn Tuet Dao, and I'm speaking with... Vladislav Tankov. Vlad, thank you so much for taking time to speak with me. Um, why don't we tell the little audience a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so uh, I've been working on Kotlin and different products in Kotlin for quite a while. So I think I've been first time on Kotlin Conf five years ago. I've been presenting Kotlin and even found some folks asking me still about Kotlin and Kotlin serverless framework. Okay. And now I'm leading JetBrains CI is a whole department that is responsible for AI at JetBrains. That's amazing. Um, I mean, and obviously, that's kind of a big announcement, one of the big announcements today. The keynote was Sveta talking about JetBrains AI. Um, I mean, for I mean, hopefully people have seen the keynote, but for anyone who happened not to have, can you just briefly explain what is JetBrains AI? Yeah, so basically, JetBrains AI is our way of answering uh, AI revolution right now that is happening across all the products we see, across the development technologies that we see. And uh, we do see that developers are actually creating code in a different way now. A lot of developers are migrating to different AI instruments. So that is why we've been working on service and uh, kind of a product that provides you with uh, most important and most kind of a uh, good uh, solutions for generation of code, for working with code, and so on. So, and today, Sveta has been announcing specifically our new code completion model mm -hmm. for Kotlin that is outperforming most of the open source models specifically for Kotlin. Uh, we've been working quite hard on it, and it's 3.7 billion parameters model that has been specifically fine-tuned for Kotlin, and we've been working quite a lot on providing very good results specifically for code completion uh, use cases. But other than that, we also, as JetBrains CI, it's a lot bigger thing. So we do have AI assistant, we are working with different LLM providers, we have partnerships with Google, with OpenAI, yeah. and other AI providers. And we are in a constant search of kind of a best and brightest LLM providers, LLM ideas, ideas around AI in general that we are integrating into our ideas like IntelliJ of Lead. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's really interesting because as you said, there's obviously a lot of buzz and hype and uh, it's a very new arena. It's like a whole different future. And I think all of us are a bit like watching the space, a bit confused. And I know like for myself, I, I've used AI systems a, just a little bit. So I'm, I'm still not quite sure the capabilities. Could you like say just in general, how is JetBrains AI different from say, you know, something like GitHub, uh, like GitHub Copilot, Co 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 right? Yeah. So I'm like, because that's the most obvious, um, and I, I think that's the one that most people have tried. So maybe pitch me, like, why, why should I care about JetBrains AI over, you know, any of the others that might be out there right now? Yeah, so there are enormous amount of solutions, I'd say, for AI, not only GitHub Copilot, but GitHub Copilot is the biggest one. Mm -hmm. uh, and the mo main difference probably between JetBrains AI and GitHub Copilot is that we are trying to apply all the ideas, all the static analysis things, and all the integration powers that we have inside JetBrains AI, so we are getting a lot more integrated experience. So we don't kind of buzz you always with the chart, but we are integrating inside the IDE. For example, if you, I don't know, renaming some variables, we are using AI to generate better names. Mm -hmm. We are using AI to refactor. We are using different uh, context providers and understanding from the ID uh, regarding the code. And we're integrating it with different AI functionalities. So basically, we're able to collect context better. We're able to understand, for example, what is your Spring or Cater project, what are the beans that you're having. And we are creating our own models and fine-tuning models from LLM providers to kind of make it all work in the symphony as an orchestra. I, I like that a lot because I think one thing that JetBrains, and as a, as a fan of JetBrains for many years now, I think the tooling at JetBrains has been one of the things that people are attracted to and most love and, and kind of what you're known for. Is it is the mission of it to I guess just augment like the current tooling with AI or is it I I, I guess that's I think as a, as again as someone who is a big fan of JetBrains and a little bit unsure of what to make of kind of like the wave of AI products there's I, I think there's like a little reticence or fear like oh like you, you know AI hallucinate AI you know like I think there's some bump still with other AI assistants um, I guess how do you address those concerns or, or how do you kind of calm those fears of people that are just in general a little nervous about AI assistance and AI oh, a lot, code. A lot code. nervous about AI. A lot nervous, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> so yeah. basically what do we see from a uh, kind of AI perspective is that JetBrains for 20 years has been based on different code analysis, uh, code analysis technologies. So like 20 years ago, people have been talking a lot about expert systems and symbolic execution and other things. 
it's still not as, uh, I'd say, good as AI, probably, or not as kind of a hyped as AI. It would be more correct uh, <laughs> way of saying. Otherwise, symbolic execution folks uh, probably would not be happy with me in this interview. But uh, we've always been using different insight technologies. And for us, AI is just new insight technologies that helps us understand code, that helps us work with code, and that helps us do different things with code. But it's still kind of a, just a new way of getting code inside and doing better things. Uh, but it's not something completely different. Mm -hmm. So we've been 20 years working with different uh, technologies to work with code, and now we just have a better technology. And also, I think one of the interesting things that initially, when JetBrains has been just founded, uh, I've been talking to founders that initially the idea was pretty much similar to what AI nowadays is doing, that we will have at some point some automatic programmer, you are just telling it what to do, and it will generate it. And uh, nowadays, uh, we see that we are kind of uh, really moving towards this direction. Like 20 years ago, it was impossible. And uh, what we ended up with was refactorings and other things that were possible at that time. But nowadays, we are really expecting that we would be able to, at some point, have uh, natural language programming and so on, uh, that will be just generating the code. I guess that's a good point that you're just, it is an extension of your current work. And of course, natural language interaction with kind of like engineering, uh, software engineering has kind of always been a goal. Just as you said, a bit of a pipe dream, but all of a sudden we kind of all, it all kind of got dumped on us in the last year that, oh, this might be a reality. I was kind of curious in your experience so far now in the process of making JetBrains AI, what are, what have been the most important factors for you in terms of like building an assistant that is correct? That, <laughs> so I don't know how to say, it, but what are the most important factors to ensure like kind of correctness and relevancy? Yeah. Quality, thank you, yeah. Yeah, so uh, there are a lot of things here. Uh, one of the probably most important probably most important things is the grounding that we are working on. So the models that we are using still kind of are trained, and Derek Meyer today had been talking about it, they're trained at some cutoff date. And that is why, uh, for example, today we released uh, Kotlin 2.0, so uh, most of the models that have been trained be before today's date uh, are already incorrect when you're asking them about uh, latest uh, Kotlin release. And that is why we are working a lot on grounding the capability of the model to retrieve some data from kind of a current existing world and uh, show it to the user and ability of the model to verify effects through the search through the embeddings and other things that is one important thing another important thing is that we are still able to use our code analytics engines for example uh, recently we've been releasing uh, one line code completion uh, that is running locally in Intelligy and we are really using a lot of uh, so-called red code detection so basically we're generating code completion and then ask Intelligy whether this code is correct whether the types are okay and so on and it really helps us also to understand that the generation was good, the generation was bad or something. So yeah, uh, we're still kind of able to reuse all the code inside and uh, we're integrating new AI ways of uh, knowing how to kind of, uh, how the world is changing our, around you and how to verify the facts that AI is providing you. It really, as you said, it's like a symphony where you have now this new instrument and it's kind of working with like the other sections of the orchestra that are already there. I think yeah. that's really brilliant. Um, I was actually wondering, you know, you mentioned that, uh, and I, I know this, there, there are certain things like on-premise LLMs and other things, but you're actually integrating multiple LLMs. Can yeah. you, as someone who knows very little, even though I should know more about uh, kind of like the AI space, how is JetBrains uh, kind of coordinating or, or kind of like, I guess, collaborating with kind of the different elements. Like, can you explain a little bit about how those different pieces fit together mm -hmm. uh, along with the kind of like the current tools that, that you okay. already have? Yeah, so basically different LMs are really different. LM providers are right now targeting different directions. So there is, uh, for example, OpenAI who are doing the best models right now or one of the best models, some may argue. Uh, there is now Google who are doing also very good models and they are pretty much on power already with GPT-4, GPT-4.0 and so on. Uh, there are some other LLM providers, including open source LLMs that are provided, for example, by Meta or Google. And all of them are kind of applicable for different choices. For example, we do see that uh, I think Gemini 1.5 mm -hmm. is one of the fastest models right now. And if you are willing to get something extremely fast or you need to use big context, you would be using Gemini 1.5. Mm -hmm. If you need to get one of the best reasoning, most likely GPT-4.0, which is kind of a, has been released a 
we can go asynchronous. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is uh, your way to go. So for different tasks, uh, you need different LLMs. You may optimize cost effectiveness. You may optimize quality. You may optimize fastness. For example, for core completion, it's not always that important that you have extremely good reasoning because still you kind of generate not that much code. But it's a lot more important to get this response a lot faster because other, otherwise customers will not be using it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're using different LLMs for different use cases. And in case of enterprise, the symphony changes a bit because uh, a lot of enterprises are actually not that interested in, I'd say, most quality or most fastest uh, solutions. They need uh, the solution that fits them. So for example, if uh, we have contracts with Google, we don't have contracts with Microsoft Azure or someone, uh, it would be easier for us to get just uh, AI Enterprise or JetBrains AI that is running upon already existing Google LMs and we don't care about getting the contract with OpenAI or something. So yeah, for JetBrains AI Cloud, we do provide uh, different LLMs for different functions, depending on the quality, on the necessity to get the fast result. Even uh, specifically, we are using different LLM providers as a backfalls for one for another, because sometimes, for example, OpenAI is down, sometimes Google is down, and it's still all being developed very rapidly. And uh, well, SLA is not 100%, I'd say. Um, but at the same time, uh, for enterprises, it's a lot more important to force specific provider. That's interesting, and but but that seems like a challenge to set the expectations because, if, as you said, if an enterprise you know customer can only you know have a certain subset of uh, LMs or other certain parameters, then as you said, the symphony changes. We might only have certain sections, so it seems like a really interesting technical challenge to be able to kind of highly optimize in your kind of optimal case where you're in the cloud and you can you can access the right LM for the right task, but then for a very specific, different, more constrained problem. It seems like a really interesting technical problem for the team to yeah, be able to balance, balance that. Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I want to ask you how to do that, but that probably is the magic that you want to keep inside. I, I will want to finish off with, um, with like in terms of like just as for me as a as a regular developer using JetBrains AI, what is you know something that you would be excited for me to try, or do you think that is incredibly you know much more stronger, faster, better with the new AI integration? What would you want me to try uh, kind of as, as the new features of Jet, JetBrains AI? Yeah, I'd say that one of the most coolest features that we've been releasing during this Kotlin Conf is multi-line code completion. So we had some alpha version previously in IntelliJ. Now we're releasing our own models that are working a lot better, we believe, uh, and they are a lot faster. So in Fleet, you would be already able. Uh, to try them out. Uh, another thing that I'm pretty interested and pretty happy about is uh, grounding. And specifically in Fleet, we are releasing uh, AI systems that is uh, knowing about Kotlin, Kotlin multi-platform, and the Fleet documentation itself. So when you're asking it about Kotlin or Fleet or something, it's able to tell you uh, like uh, what is the latest release, what has been in the latest release, and how you need to work with dispatchers and coroutines nowadays. Uh, another thing that probably will be releasing pretty soon is uh, integ uh, deeper integration between kind of uh, uh, functionalities of uh, code editor in case of Fleet or IDE in case of IntelliJ and AI Assistant, JetBrains AI Assistant. Uh, we'll be providing you with ability to kind of uh, and AI system with ability to kind of run specific functions inside the code editor. For example, in case of Fleet, uh, you may ask to it to change the team, and it provides you right in the chat the way to change the team, provides pop up and so on, and it's uh, pretty powerful uh, concept, I'd say, because basically we are able to do a lot harder things with it. We can, for, for example, you can ask in natural language uh, to commit something and we generate everything and just push the button and it works. That's beautiful. I, I, I really do like it. It seems like the theme is that, uh, you know, even though that, you know, you're kind of entering into the AI space, you're still doing it as JetBrains and using, again, I, I'm so fascinated by the Kotlin language model and I wish I had another half an hour to ask you about that, but I should probably just watch your talk, but that you're still grounding it uh, yeah. grounding it in this general sense of the term in kind of like the tooling and like the process you already have. And of course, just kind of leveraging the tools that you already have and just bringing AI into that and just augmenting that rather than it being something separate that is kind of alien and trying to like, you know, as a third party or as an external party work. So I, I love that. That's actually very exciting. Yeah, that's kind of basically important. The most important thing probably right now about JetBrains AI. So we do not create like AI functionality that is completely separate. We are actually working on integration and we're trying to create one product that kind of solves the problems of the users with AI, without AI, users actually don't care whether it was symbolic execution or GPT-4.0. 
Yeah. Have you, um, I mean, I guess, I guess hopefully we'll, we'll be getting some good user feedback yet and continuing the very good JetBrains uh, kind of feedback cycle that I know that we're used to. But yeah, thank you so much, uh, Vlad, for joining us. It's, yeah, thank you. It's an exciting time and, and like congratulations on the announcement and uh, good luck on the future work on JetBrains AI. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, if anyone wanted to find you on the internet, ask you questions, hopefully not submit too many bug reports or anything like that, uh, where can they find you? <laughs> yeah. So I do have a Twitter handler of VD Tankov. So you can always ask me on Twitter. Really? Well, thank you so much, Vlad, uh, for taking time. And thank you all. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.